This video is brought to you by the Bates College Digital and Computational Studies Program under a Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike version 4.0 license. This video is going to walk you through connecting the microbit to Max MSP. So we're going to start by finding the serial communications tutorial. This is in MSP7. We'll open up the tutorial so we have something to copy and paste from. And this is not uh, at all an MSP tutorial overall. I am an MSP newbie, um, but I have learned enough to be able to do this. So what's nice about MSP is it represents programs as a flow of data from one block to another. Um, and we're able to not only that, but um, it's not only that is this nice visual representation, but it actually is also kind of cool because uh, we're able to take tutorials and interact with them. <clears throat> so I'm going to start by copying a few blocks into my own program. And there's one or two things that I want to highlight, and I'll come back and say again later. The serial block is fiddly to work with. And what it does is it says that there is a serial port and a speed. The metronome drives how quickly we read the serial port. And I forget the units of the metronome right now. Like, I can't remember if that's 100 milliseconds between metronome clicks. Um, so students in the digital music course, you will, you will know this. I do not. But you can go over to the console and learn things about these blocks. Um, a really important block is print. It lets us see things that are going on. So, for example, if I exit editing mode with a command click and then um, open up the console it's going to be important in this tutorial i can then bang the print block and i can see all of the serial ports that max msp is able to see now that will become important to us because the micro bit shows up as a serial device s-e-r-i-a-l meaning one thing after another so in this case what we're saying is that we are going to be sending data from a micro bit to the computer over a USB string, uh, string cable. So in Mac, uh, in the make code environment for the micro bit for the CPX students in DCS 102, you'll see that this is essentially the same language that you've explored. Um, I'm going to demonstrate how this works first with one of the micro bits, but I'm not going to use the radio. Uh, well, we could pick a random number to send it to Max MSP. And s no, that's silly. Um, why don't I just grab the accelerometer value from the micro bit? I'm going to plug it in. Here we go. And I'm going to be looking at the x axis, which is that side to side tilt. So I'll get that plugged in. And it's always a trick trying to keep it in the frame. Uh, if I now bang the print button, I can see there's a new serial port. It's serial port D. That number occasionally changes. This is part of the dance we have to do with the serial port block. So you need to now edit the contents of the block to make sure that it shows up. I I can't explain why it shows up as a USB modem. Um, it's not going to say micro bit or anything sensible over there. Um, I could explain the history of why it says that, but you're really not interested. So, serial port D, and we have to say it's running at 100,500 bits per second. Um, we'll put a print block out, and we're going to take the output of the serial port and run it to the print. And now if I turn on the metronome, we're going to see that we're going to start getting data um, because we're serial printing it from the micro bit. Oops, uh, critical step, pro tip. Download your code and put it on the micro bit before you try and demonstrate anything. So let's open up this. We see my micro bit. Here's my download. Let's drag it over. Cool. Um, we wait, we wait. Ooh. 
tells me the disk did not eject properly, but now if I start the metronome, or, you know, by the way, sometimes that serial port will change, so I find that often after you program the micro bit, you need to come in, put in a space, hit return, everything wiggles, and you'll pick up the micro bit again. So let's see if we can get some data from this micro bit. We can see that it is sending data because the transmit light is blinking on it. And if I click X, here we go. We're getting data from the micro bit. It's very exciting. Um, and as I change, uh, <coughs> the numbers are changing, but they don't make sense to me. Um, I'm expecting the numbers to be between, let's see what the help says. I seem to remember that we should be getting a number between negative 1023 and positive 1023. And as I tilt this, I'm not really getting anything sensible. Now that's because the micro bit is sending the values over as characters, meaning it's actually sending an X and then an equal sign and then a number, but it's not sending one number, it's sending, let's say it's the number 500, it's sending a five and a zero and a zero, and then it's sending a new line and a return. All right. Um, by the way, if you leave that console running long enough, it will fill up and slow down your Mac because it stores all the data. Uh, I learned that the hard way one day. So occasionally you may want to stop the, the printing um, or clear the, the console. Um, and it really can eat a lot of memory. So that 120, if we were to open up a web browser tab and look for an ASCII table, the... Uh, American Standard Information something, something. Uh, what we can see is that an X is the number 120. So there's our, there's our X. The equal sign is the number 58. The numbers that follow are going to be a, an actual number followed by a carriage return in a new line, and that's the 13 and the 10. So somehow we have to turn this mess of data into something we can read. So we're going to start by copying and pasting a little bit more of the, um, the serial tutorial. We're going to select the new line and return as the ending point of our groupings. And then we will group up to a thousand characters into a single list. Um, so let's see, we'll take the output of the serial port. We're going to run that into our selection block in Max MSP. And I'm going to re I'm going to move the output of our print so that it is from the output of our group. Now, if I start up the metronome again, what I'm going to see is that it's now grouping my data. So I get X equals and a number. And if I come over here and play with the micro bit, that's starting to look a little bit more sensible, but it's still not something that I can use. So, the next block that I want is I2A, which takes a list of numbers representing alphabetic characters and lets me turn it into something I can read. Uh, I'm just not good enough to read those as, uh, as anything other than a couple of numbers that just look really random to me. So let's take that output and put it here. And let's redirect my print output to the output of the I2A block. And wow, look at that. Uh, I lied. It wasn't an equal sign. It was a colon. Um, now, as I tilt to one extreme in the x-axis, I get up to 1023 uh, or 1024. And as I get down to the other end, look at that negative 1024. Uh, and it's actually possible to get values greater than that, depending on the sensitivity of the accelerometer. Uh, if I turn off this micro bit, uh, or sorry, if I turn off the metronome, we'll see that the data stops running. And if I start up the metronome again, it continues reading from the micro bit. Now, I really don't want, uh, that was just an example, I really don't want to be reading the accelerometer of the device attached to the computer, unless I'm using it to control things that are part of the dance performance. That is, we really want to use that micro bit as a radio receiver. So the first thing I need to do is I need to set my radio group. The radio group is the radio channel we're listening on. Think about it as dialing in your, the radio in your car. 
If it's on the wrong station, you don't hear what you want. So each group is going to have to choose their own radio broadcast frequency. I've set the group to 42 here. There's 127 different groups. You can, uh, you guys can all figure that out. I don't need a forever block at this point. Uh, what I need, this is kind of cool, is I need something that says when I receive something on the radio, I want to print to the serial port the name and the value that I received. So that's my entire receiver. When I receive a radio signal, take the name that was broadcast to me, print it with the value that was broadcast to me. So that is the entire program. And then as I tilt the transmitter, it's going to send its data wirelessly and the receiver will receive it, send it over USB, and I'll use that to drive Max MSP. Okay. Let's see where we go with this. Drag that onto our micro bit. Okay, so uh, here we are. I'm going to go ahead and twiddle the serial block because I programmed my micro bit and it may have lost its mind. Um, the connection at uh, Max MSP is fragile. Uh, here we go. We can now see that we're we're getting some num. Uh, there we go. So those were the old numbers. If we clear the console, we see there's nothing coming in. And when I tilt the receiver, nothing happens. It's because it is waiting for radio data. All right. So next step. Let us remain in make code. I'm going to go ahead and grab that URL so I can paste it in somewhere later. Da, da, da. Let's grab a text edit. Uh, no. Right. Uh, da, da. There we go. All right. So now we're going to write the code for the transmitter. It also needs to be set to group 42. And we don't need either of these. We do need a forever block because we will be transmitting over and over and over. So then we come down to the variables. I'm going to create a variable to hold the x-axis value of my accelerometer. Um, so the first thing I'll do is I will say that I want to set the x-axis to the acceleration value read from the accelerometer. Um, and the next thing I will do is I will then send over the radio that it is x, and the value that I want to send is the reading that I just took. I'm actually going to also do what I tell the 102 students to do, which is you should always initialize all of the variables that you're using to some known value. We're going to do that just as a habit of practice. So this is the entire program. We set our group to 42 so that we're transmitting on the same channel that the receiver is listening. We're going to do a reading from the accelerometer. Then we're going to blast that over the airwaves and uh, see how we do. So I plug in the transmitter. Cool. It's running some old code that's about to go away. Go to download, done. Uh, ta -da. Let's see. Um, here we are. So we program the other micro bit. If you have two micro bits plugged in, they both show up as micro bit. You just have to hope you guess correctly. Um, if you unplug and replug them, I, I forget what order they show up in. So now if I twist the, I've got a receiver and a transmitter. Let's go over to Max MSP. So I'm trying to keep them in the screen here. Um, looks like I'm receiving values and they're changing slightly. Now, it should be that if I move the receiver, nothing happens. It looks like something is, but that's because they're plugged into each other. So if I actually, uh, go to the extremes of the transmitter, you can see I get to about negative 1024, and I go to the other extreme and I get positive 1024. So I honestly claim that it is my transmitter that is sending the data and the receiver is receiving it. If I hold the transmitter really still, best I can, and I move the receiver, we see no data is, no data should be changing, but it's because they're plugged into each other. Like it's physically the hub is wiggling around. So, uh, now I have to look around the office. Um, there's got to be a battery pack somewhere. So uh, some hold music. Do, 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 do.
There's words to that. I don't know the words. Um, ooh, there we go. So I've got a battery pack. I have unplugged the transmitter. I'm going to plug the battery into the transmitter. Very exciting. And look at that. Data is now appearing on the receiver. And so as I slowly t uh, turn the transmitter, we can see how the values track. It is truly wireless. Nothing up my, I'm, I'm wearing short sleeves. Um, nothing up my sleeve. So we have, uh, I'm going to claim, I can even take it out of camera and I can, I can wiggle it around. I can move the, the, the transmitter from one extreme to the other. You can't even see it, but the numbers are changing. So that's a really quick tutorial. By really quick, I mean 16 or so minutes. Um, that gives you the basics for the music group. You know, keep in mind that serial block is fiddly every time we change the code on the micro bit. You probably shouldn't have to change the receiver often. So it really, once you've set up a receiver, you should be able to leave it plugged in and everything just works, he says. Uh, there's a little bit more that's needed in here. Um, you have to keep an eye on that port. And there's more to do to split the string into usable data for music. But we have enough to be getting on with. If you have questions, by all means, reach out and ask. Um, but hopefully that helps get you started.